Dreaming of a night, laying on the rock. Prophet I, man. I, I, coming from Queens, um, been doing this rap thing for a long time, for yeah. a little bit. Familiarize yourself with those that are in these campuses right now and um, know exactly who you are. I've been, I've been rapping for about 10 years. i uh, actually been taking it serious as a career for only about a year and a half. Um, I worked in the music industry for like five years now. What were you doing? I was doing like label work, A&R stuff, scouting. I uh, did artist management outside of the label stuff because labels got kind of crazy. They wouldn't hire me because I was so young, but I was busting ass. So, it's a lot of politics. So then I just, <laughs> so I just got into I got into the artist management stuff because I, you know I was taught by the old school dudes at the labels, you know, to work very hands on, and you know I like to mold artists. You know, so then I went to artist management, started managing bands. I had two bands, one from Boston, one from Vegas. Started doing that. Um, then I got with a bigger company. They ended up hearing my music and taking me on as a client by chance. So, so did you get serious. to a point where you were seeing artists and not, I guess, liking what you hear or liking the talent you found that made you just say, you know what, I'm going to focus on being an artist? No, I, it just kind of happened by chance. I didn't even tell people I rhymed. Mm -hmm. When I worked at labels, I didn't tell people I rapped. Uh, I told a little bit, but I didn't like, I didn't like how artists were handled, so I didn't really push my stuff because it wasn't really ready. So once I got to like um, the management... Uh, this dude Toby from this band called H2O, which is a like a legendary punk band. He actually found my music because I was doing a project for him, and he told my managers at the time that I rapped. So they like, oh, we didn't even know you did that. So they brought me on. So I really wasn't going to be an artist full time like this. Mm -hmm. I was gonna do it in the future, but when I felt like I was ready, but I guess the universe was like, you're ready now, cool. and it just set me up. And so what was that moment? Sure. When was that moment that it said? Yeah, this is it. Like, I got to focus right um, on being an artist. Well, when they were like, we want to sit down and manage you. Like, we want... And I was like, oh, man. Like, this, I wasn't... I was... I wanted to manage bands. I wanted to manage artists. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't want to really focus on myself because, you know, I, I love doing behind the scenes stuff while I was doing my craft. So when they were like, we want, to, we want you as a client, I was like, oh, man. Like, I could really do this. Mm -hmm. So then I did have my first show by myself. Uh, my 21st birthday, and then I was like, all right, this is for real. Now, now you keep jumping back and forth. I don't want to get anything confused because, mm -hmm. I mean, the streamers that are listening, listeners on the campus, are, are used to us getting prominently hip hop acts. Yeah. Now you keep jumping back from the word band. Yeah. And but you do rap music. I do hip hop. Hip hop, but bands that you were managing had. No, they weren't hip hop artists. I managed a hardcore band from uh, from Boston called Energy and a. Uh, pop punk band from Vegas called Love It or Leave It. Now, now, um, I, I've dabbled with managing as well as far as music is concerned, and, and I definitely know to manage an act, you have to believe in that act. Yep. And your ear for what they want to put out has to be very, very, very keen mm -hmm. in order to, because you might run into conflict conflict with them. Yeah. So what I, oh, the one thing I'm trying to point out is if you have that ability as a manager, to manage a rock band, I could like the versatility must be off the wall because you make rap music. Yeah. So I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of versatility there. Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of the things I took from managing rock bands, I applied to managing myself as an artist. I mean, I have management now. You know, um, shout out to Peter Oasis and Shameless Management. But before I was managed by people again, um, I was doing it by myself. Like when I, I left my first managers. And I basically had to start over. When I was with my first management, I had a deal on the table with Universal. Like, things were happening. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it didn't really go as to plan, so I was kind of stuck out on my own. And my knowledge prior, being that I learned the business first, allowed me to really do it on my own. You know, I put out this album, because <clears throat> when you start dreaming by myself, self-funded, um, booked my own shows, and really built my own name by myself. So now that I have management, I, I got to the point where it's like I could only do so much for myself. Now I need to get to that extra level. But managing rock bands, you know, made me focus on grinding, grind, 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 show, show, shows, shows uh, dominate your hometown, uh, just things like that, little things like that. You know, it's funny that you say that because I recently read an article on um, Billboard and they, were, and they were talking about how Lil Wayne dominated the, the urban scene, let alone more more or less the entire um, scene for the, his tour this year, yeah. the tour that he just put up. And he did um, better than any numbers than anyone did as far as urban acts concerned yeah. lifetime. 
Now, when I was watching that, I was I was sitting there thinking, you know what? Who's gonna benefit from this the most would probably be Drake, because Drake could could possibly be the first um, hip hop artist being birthed during a rock tour. I mean, during a hip hop tour. Mm -hmm. Most rock artists that are open up, they usually birth during tour. It's not the way hip hop is ran, usually by a single or yeah. street buzz. Yeah. So you have that old fashioned rock approach. I wouldn't even say rock. I think that's a more traditional music approach. Yes, yes. You open up for a better band and eventually you do a year, two years touring, more people familiarize themselves yep. with you. That's how you can sell internationally. Yep. But it, for lack of a better word, I think hip hop works a little ass backwards and we got comfortable with that work. Mm -hmm. But now that retail doesn't move anymore, we have to go back to the so you kind of have the one up with your dad being involved in that and whatnot. Yeah, I mean he toured, he toured when when I was he wasn't even born. He was touring, you know. It's like I was doing the ish when you was ishing in Pampas, huh? Yeah, he was. <laughs> you know, it's like, but you have to think about other ways to get money now. It's like, and these labels know it too. That's why they're trying to sign you to 360 deal so they can take your merch and they can take all that all your touring. So it's like they know, you know. And if you're a hip hop artist, you you. A lot of them are not well versed in the business, so they don't understand. Like you have to tour. If you don't put on a good show, who's gonna mess with you? Like it sucks because I, you know, I'm a humble dude, but I see a lot of these dudes who are on, on these blogs and you know they shine, and I see them live, and it's a bit of a disappointment. Yeah. And I'm like, how am I supposed You've to like you in five years from now? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of bands that I still see that I saw in '93, '96, I will still pay money to see now mm -hmm. because they still put on a great show. So it could apply from a rock band to a country band to an opera to a play, whatever. It applies to hip hop, and that's how it is. I want, you know, that's why a live show is very important to me. It's probably the record is is really important to me, but the live show is probably the most important piece. Of this.